Hi, this is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV episode 70. So today I am going to show you my latest art journal page and how that inspired a piece of jewelry, which I'm going to show you how to make. So let's get started. So, as you may have seen last week on my blog, I shared this beach-themed art journal page, and I showed you how to make it if you were interested in making that. So I'll have a link below to that post. If you are interested, you can click over and see it. Today I'm going to show you how to make a piece of jewelry that is inspired by this page. Now, when you are considering doing something like this, pulling inspiration from an art journal page in particular, or really anything, there are some different things you can think of to kind of get your brain going on how to actually take the inspiration from this page or from whatever your inspiration is and interpret it into jewelry. So the things I'm thinking about specifically for this page and this jewelry piece are the theme of the page. This is a beach page. I'm at the beach. I, you know, this photo is from Cape May, New Jersey, along the beach, and that's what this whole page is about. You might also want to think about the colors. So, in this case, those are the two things I'm thinking most about. The kind of the colors of the beach of this page and the theme specifically of the beach. So I've said beach quite a few times and that's what this is all about. So let me show you what we're going to need to make this piece of jewelry. So when I was originally considering what I would make, I had a whole different idea and then I had this idea that I'm going to show you. Um, but I originally was thinking I wanted to use shell beads and in the kind of some different colors, um, a lot of browns and kind of tans to kind of go with the whole sand feeling. But what ended up happening is I actually found this necklace at a thrift store and it's very beachy and I kind of thought that these beads might be shells but they're actually wooden but I think they'll work just the same. So I'm going to actually take this necklace apart and use the beads and that's something if you've been following me for any amount of time I do all the time. I like to go to thrift stores find jewelry inexpensively and take it apart to make something new so you just look for the components that you happen to like and it doesn't matter what the piece of jewelry lo looks like because you're going to take it apart. So as long as you can take it apart, and as long as it has beads or chain or charms, whatever it is you like about it, that you can take apart to make something new, going to the thrift store to, for jewelry, jewelry supplies is a great idea. So I'm going to use this. You don't need this many beads. Um, we're going to be making a pendant, and of course I'm going to show you how to do that. So um, you're going to need some beads. You don't necessarily need to do a beach theme. This will work for any beads whatsoever that you want to use. So um, you can use whatever beads you want. And then you're also going to need 20 gauge half hard round wire. I am using non tarnish silver plated wire. You can use any metal that you like. You'll need wire cutters round nose pliers and chain nose pliers and you might need some bent nose pliers just to help with the wrapping they're not necessarily super important but they're nice to have on hand if you have them you also need something cylindrical to wrap the wire around because we're going to be making a hoop pendant so you can make this any size that you like i have this candle that is about the size that I want to use. Don't be <laughs> confused by the kind of Christmas look to it because I actually burn this all the time and it's a beautiful peppermint scent that I like all the time. So I really do burn it 
any time. Not that you need to know that, but you can use anything that is kind of round and the size you want it to be. So this will make a pretty big pendant. This is, you know, close to two inches, not quite. So if you want to make it a large one like that, you can. If you want to make a smaller one, you might want to use your ring mandrel, kind of one of the bigger sizes, or something like that. It all depends on the size you want to make. So just look around your house, see what you have. Um, you might be able to use a lid of like hair gel or something like that, or a can from your kitchen. Um, some of the cans will probably be bigger than you want it to be, but sometimes you can get, you do have little cans of things. Um, just kind of look around your house and see what you can find. And like I said, if you want to make a smaller pendant, then you could just use your ring mandrel kind of toward the larger size, and that would work great too. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is measure our wire around our cylindrical item and form a hoop. And I haven't cut any wire. Um, because I don't know what size of thing you're going to be wrapping around, so I don't want to tell you a length and it'd be wrong. But basically, you're going to measure around and then leave at least an inch and a half on each side. So on each wire, so the sides that once it comes past where it crosses, uh, you know, one and a half to two inches. And then you can cut the wire. And I'm just going to set this aside for now, and we'll go back to it. And just make sure your wire is in a general round shape. Um, that's It probably will be, because you probably just took it off a spool. So you don't need to straighten it, just leave it as is. So I'm grabbing my beads, and I am cutting apart this necklace that I got at the thrift store. And then we're just going to bead around. So I'm just going to kind of choose a random pattern of these beads. They're kind of different colors, but I'm just kind of beading these on. And this is a question that sometimes comes up. Sometimes your beads will have a very small um, hole. The bore will be very small. So, if that is the case, you may need to use a thinner wire that your beads will actually slide onto. So, I'm suggesting you use 20 gauge. You might want to try 22 gauge. However, the thinner your wire is, the less sturdy your pendant will be. So, just keep that in mind. You can experiment with it, though. So, we're just going to bead all the way around the circle, and then I will show you what to do next. Okay, so I have beaded this hoop, and I beaded the full way around up to the point where I had mentioned leave an inch and a half to two inches on each end. Um, so we'll just leave those plain. And then if you need to, you can return this and around your cylindrical object and just make sure you still have a perfect circle. Of course, you don't necessarily have to have a perfect circle. You could make it a different shape if you want, maybe a teardrop or something like that. So now we're going to finish this pendant. So at the top here, where these wires cross, we are going to make a twist. And I'm going to twist all the way around. Now, as you do this, make sure you hold everything close together. And as you can see, I didn't. So I'm trying to make this look like a continuous circle of beads. So you want to hold everything kind of close. So I'm just going to try this again. And make a full twist. And that's better. All right. And if you get this out of shape at any time, you can just kind of put it back and bend it against your circle object. Okay, so now we're going to make a loop at the top. And so we're going to grab our round nose pliers to make our loop. And 
what you want to consider is if you want to slide this on a chain or possibly a cord or something, you need to make the loop big enough that it will slide on. So that will kind of determine where on your round nose pliers you want to form this loop. I'm just going to go ahead and make it as big as I can with my round nose pliers. So I'm going to use the part of the round nose pliers that's closer to the handle because it's larger there. And so just grab one of the wires in the round nose pliers and then wrap the wire around forming a loop. Okay, so now this loop is kind of off center and we want it to be centered, so this is how I do this. I'm just moving this wire kind of out of the way, the other wire that we haven't used yet. And you hold the loop in chain nose pliers and then you just wrap the wire around, the wire, the same wire we've been working with around one time and you just kind of pull out the loop part, the hoop part here that we have beaded as you go around one time and then you have a straight loop. You can kind of adjust it if need be. Um, so it's straight and then I just like to switch hands and this is where your bent nose pliers will come in handy and we're going to wrap around and I got my wires twisted so I'm going to untwist those a couple more times with that same wire. Okay, and then we have this other wire. So we're going to wrap around a couple times with that wire as well. And you can just kind of go the way that the wire is already naturally wanting to go. So sometimes that's the opposite of the other wire and sometimes it's kind of the same. Things kind of can get a little bit funky, a little misshapen as you go along, so you can just kind of fix that all up. And then we're going to trim off the excess wire. I'm grabbing my wire cutters and I'm going to be making a flush cut with, on both of these wires to trim off the excess. And that just means the flat side of most wire cutters toward what you're cutting. So what you're leaving behind is a nice straight cut. trimming off both of those wires and then you can just grab your chain nose pliers and just make sure those ends are not poking out and you can run your finger over just to check and then actually you're, if you're going to be putting the um, a cord or a chain through you want the loop to be going this way so you can just kind of twist it so it is and then just make sure this is all in the shape you want and that is the pendant. So then I just have this cotton cord and um, I used and crimps on each end and added a clasp and I'm just going to slide that through. You could do this with a chain if you want and then that is the necklace. Other ideas you could do, you could make hoop earrings, so you would just add earring wires, you'd make two that matched, and then add earring wires to the top. You of course can make this smaller or larger, you could attach things that dangle down. If you wanted to make a beaded necklace to put this on, you would just slide this onto your beading wire and then bead out the rest of it. Wherever your imagination takes you, that's what you can do with this necklace. So, for those of you who are new to wire wrapping, I have exciting news. I have a free intro to wire wrapping e-course, and you get it by signing up for my newsletter, and the link will be below this video for you to do that. If you want a PDF with step-by-step -step photos, of this tutorial. You also get that from signing up for my newsletter. So I send those out every 
two weeks when I do my new videos to all my subscribers. So you can sign up there as well for my email newsletter. It's at KimberlyKohler.com and you'll see the sign up box to the right. If you like the idea of getting inspiration from nature, I am re-releasing my nature jewelry e-workshop. It has lots of videos and it's the first week of rediscover your creativity and make jewelry. So if you missed that, you can get the first week anytime. In it, you get a creativity booster, which is all about nature. You get jewelry skills lessons and then you get a bunch of jewelry projects to inspire you. So I'll have the link below this video for that as well. And I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks with a new video. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time in between then. So remember to come over to my website for the step-by-step -step photo instructions. And if you want a PDF of this and future episodes, then just come over to KimberlyCooler.com slash email dash newsletter and sign up there and that's also where you will get the intro to wire wrapping e-course. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.